Capra, starting. Are ultralight aircraft safe to fly? It's a burning question. I've been asked that question many times over the years, and the best answer I can give is, it is only as safe as you make it. In the very early days of ultralight flying in Australia, it was an unregulated flying pastime. Unfortunately, there were many fatalities, and eventually an association called the AUF was created and introduced compulsory flight training. Fast forward to today, and the current regulators, RAOs, have transformed ultralight flying into a safer and enjoyable pastime, and has in place a standard of a minimum of 15 hours with a CFI, and five hours solo for both single and dual seater aircraft, with a biannual flight review every two years. There is also an emphasis on GA conversion training for those wishing to transition from GA to ultralight flying. So to answer the ultralight safety question properly, there are two factors. One, the quality of the aircraft that you put under your backside, and two, the maintenance and pre-flight procedures that you, as the pilot, undertake to fly safely. Regarding the first factor, I might be a bit biased, but having flown the Quicksilvers for over 20 years, I find the brand to be strong and easy to fly, and history has shown them to have an excellent safety record with over 15,000 aircraft flying worldwide. There are many other aircraft in the ultralight market that are just as good as the Quicksilvers, but there are also some that are accidents waiting to happen, so choose your aircraft wisely. Check the history of the brand. If you're buying second hand, it's also important to check the history of the aircraft that you are buying. Regarding the second factor, if you analyse ultralight accidents over the many years, you will find a lack of common sense is a huge factor in a majority of the accidents. So I have analysed my own pre-flight procedures and come up with these five main points. This is only a guide, so add your own points to suit your own aircraft. If you at least follow these five points, you should have many good flying years ahead of you. Number one, do a serious walk around and a visual check of your aircraft. Start by checking your main structural bolts and check all visible parts and look for any loose or leaking components. The flight manual for your aircraft should have a checklist to follow. Then check the oil level, the water level, brake fluid, tyre pressures, and check the propeller conditions for any damage from the last flight. Don't assume that just because you landed okay with your last flight that everything is okay for the next flight. Number two. Make sure you have the right amount of fuel with reserve for your flight and replace the fuel if the aircraft hasn't been flown for a while. Plus, check that the fuel filters are clean. Number three. Do a proper warm up and run up of the engine as per the engine manual specs. If it's a Rotax 912 four stroke, burp the engine, then check the oil level before starting. Then run the engine at 2000 to 2200 revs at startup till the oil temperature gets up to its operating temp level. Then go to 3000 revs checking that all gauges are within their range before a full run up. And don't forget the magneto check. With the Rotax 582 or 503 two stroke, similar procedures but get the EGTs and the water temp to operating temperature before a full run up check. Number four. Check your weather from multiple sources, which is so much easier nowadays with the internet, iPads and iPhones. And don't rely on, oh the weather is good now, maybe it'll stay that way. And if you're flying a light ultralight, such as a Quicksilver MXL, which is a fair weather flyer, make a sensible decision on whether to fly or not, so that your aircraft can handle the predicted weather. Number 5. And this is the most important one of the lot. Put your common sense hat on. If things don't seem right within yourself, the weather, your aircraft, or your inner sixth sense, then don't fly. There will be other days and other times to follow your passion for flying ultralight aircraft. Too many flyers have come undone 
by travelling an hour or more to the airfield, then convince themselves that they have come all this way and deserve to get a fly in. So always apply common sense. Now these are all good points for ultralight flyers, but these points are applicable to anyone flying any aircraft. Following these five points may seem obvious, but following them could save your life. Every aircraft is different, so check your aircraft flight manual for extra points to add to your list. So make your own list and follow it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already, and hit the like button. So fly happy and fly safe. See you in the next video.